January 26 fills me with a lot of trepidation. I feel a bit fearful because it's also a moment where I'm reminded that the country wants to forget me. It keeps saying that this is the most important story. The arrival of the First Fleet is the most important story that defines our nation. And I know it's different than that. Each year, like clockwork, I can just feel this sense of exhaustion and grief. The fact that we're having the same conversations every year, and it's always a drag for First Nation people. It's always something that's spiritually draining and emotionally draining, and there's this cloud that just hovers around that is super dark. Having grown up in Western New South Wales, you know, the history of colonisation for me is that, you know, invasions swept across my lands. There are so many sites of massacres across that country. And that story has still not been heard and told. I want Australians to sort of look at the narrative through our lens and actually realise that this was a day where there was war declared on our nations across this country. Innocent civilians from our society were murdered and it began a change of our lives and our destinies. Our thoughts were articulated in 1938 in the declaration of the day of mourning. Certainly in summary, 1938 was about calling for equity. Equity in terms of access to employment, education, housing, health. There were certainly calls for national representative bodies, a body that would represent us all equally across the nation. All of these things have not occurred. We are a nation that still has not recognised First Nations peoples in its founding documents. There is no voice, there is no treaty, and there has been no truth-telling on this soil. And I think that's what so many Australians are beginning to understand, is that we are still yet to resolve those unfinished business with the First Nations of this country. I reckon that as Australians, we have a real identity problem. We think that we're young and scrappy and we're lucky, where in fact, we should be elders on the world stage. And the more we think that we can learn from Indigenous Australia, rather than thinking of it as a deficit model, then I think we'll have an Australia Day that's more important and embraced by everyone. I'll be spending January 26 the same way I spend January 26 every year, with my family, with fellow First Nation people sitting and reflecting and celebrating the oldest continual documented culture of mankind in the world. I've always spent it amongst my community, with my community. That generally is the way I celebrate Australia Day, or dare I use the word, commemorate Australia Day, as a day in which I want to be with my community, where I feel safe, I feel valued, and I don't have to justify who I am. I'll show up to the protests and I engage in conversations with friends about what it means to me. And I urge all Australians, particularly non-Indigenous Australians, to understand that you have the power to you know, have that conversation at your breakfast table, at your dinner tables and at your barbecues on this day. In order for me to feel authentic, in celebrating this country and, and celebrating Australia Day. I think a change of the date is absolutely necessary and to be quite honest is the bare minimum. We need to build some identity that's from deep within and it starts with our relationship with this country, our relationship with the First Peoples and then this idea of how we can work together to make structural change and not just the window dressing. So Australia, how fortunate you are to play host to the oldest people, the first astronomers, the first bakers, the first farmers. That is incredible. Let's celebrate that together and that's what makes this unique nation's point of difference to the rest of the globe. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.